Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and we are back for my third episode in my GPS mod tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to use GPS mod to cultivate a field. And I'll uh, kind of cover the, the whole process from beginning to end. And this is meant to kind of build on the previous two episodes. So if you haven't seen the previous two episodes in this tutorial, I recommend you go back and start from the beginning. I'll put a link to the playlist in the video description. Okay, so we're over here at field 15. Yep, field 15. And uh, this crop is actually withered, so it needs to be cultivated in so that we can plant something else. So I've got this uh, JCB and then this little uh, coon uh, chisel plow here. And if we wanted to use GPS mod for this, we bring it up just like normal. And then we can auto detect our working width. Now, one thing I kind of wanted to point out, watch this. Like if I come in here angled and I say auto width or well, we can do new and then auto width or maybe not be so severely angled. There we go. New auto width. See, it doesn't give me an offset and it doesn't screw up the width because this is directly three point mounted right so it when it's detecting that extra width they're detecting the offset like we saw with the planter earlier that's because it's hooked up to the hitch and so the implements actually add a different angle than the tractor but because this is directly mounted to the tractor there's no way for it to be at a different angle so it it automatically will always be the right width and the no offset so we've got our working width we're going to set our edge, just like we normally do. Now we're going to turn on auto turn. And here, see, it's defaulting to the left, but we actually want to turn right, so we stay in the field. So we're going to hit that button, we'll turn right. And I can lower the chisel plow. And we'll go into active mode, and then I'll set my cruise control. And you see it's pulling the, the plow, everything's great. Or the cultivator, everything's good. And when it gets to the end here, it's going to want to turn to go down the next row. Now, the problem is this is really narrow and it won't lift it, right? So unlike a hired worker or course play, it's not going to lift it. So you see it's going to skip a couple rows. It keeps bumping out the next possible row until it knows it can make that turn. And so it will work its way all the way through the field continually skipping let's see it looks like it skipped two rows there we'll count it when it does the next turn here sorry it skipped one two three oh it skipped three rows okay and then went down the fourth one so you can if you know you're gonna wind up skipping rows you can kind of control that. I'm actually going to stop them here. You can control that with this uh, free lane plus. So if you look over here, you see it's got zero set. So it's currently not going, it's going to try to not skip one, right? Uh, if it could make this turn, it would come down the next one. You can increment this and say, you know what, go ahead and skip four right um and then we can turn our cruise control back on here so now we're telling it to go ahead and skip four uh, but this could actually cause us some issues because one two three four five six so before it was skipping four we just told it to go ahead and skip four and it still wound up skipping too many and so you got to kind of be careful about that. One of the places where that can be handy is say you're playing in multiplayer and you've got four people out all harvesting the same field or a couple people out all running fertilizers in a field. You can set up so that you're each skipping like three or something like that. But you need to be careful with it because it doesn't quite, it's not intuitive, right? It's not quite working the way you thought it would work. 
So normally when I'm in single player mode, what I'll do is just leave that down at zero and it will make the tightest possible turn. And then what I do when I get to the end of the field is that I just then kind of turn it around myself, get it lined up with the next row and then send it back. And you need to make sure that you're going to turn the right way when you get at the end of the field. And this way it will um, auto turn. And so say uh, this is a little screwed up now because we skipped uh, different numbers of lanes on each pass. But say you always skipped four. Well then you just have to go back and forth over the field four times. Every time when you get to the end you just manually move it one row over and then send it back the other direction and it will always just keep skipping the same number of rows as it turns back and forth across the field. So you can see there that actually kind of worked out because we came down the right hand side of this row and now we're on the inside of this row and it's going to skip three and it'll go down the middle of this and then it will skip uh, one, two, three and it should go down um, the other side, the far side of this next row in theory when it makes the turn. So even though you don't have the turning radius to do it, um, it is still possible to use auto turns uh, in a scenario like this. Now, this kind of demonstrates another nice feature that I really like about GPS mod, and that's even if you're not auto turning, if you're just using it as a guide, it's really handy because there are a lot of implements like this one that even if you pick it up at the end of the field, it's hard to make it do a complete like hairpin double back where it's going the exact next row over. So if you're manually driving, and this is keeping track of your lane spacing for you, well then you can just skip two lanes, turn, skip two lanes, turn, and manually drive up and down the field using the GPS to guide you. And you, you just know that, um, you know, you gotta go back and forth a couple times to get full coverage, but uh, because the lane spacing was maintained by GPS mod, then you don't have to worry about something being too wide or too narrow or making too many passes. You're still getting really optimal coverage on the field uh, and also optimizing your uh, limited turn radius, right? All right, in this next turn, I think we're gonna run into an issue here. This is where it's gonna try and go down a lane. Yep, so we've already gotten that lane. So what I'll do is I'll have it come down this one here instead. You can see it does a pretty good job. I, you obviously have to clean up your headlands a little bit on either side just because of the way it turns, but the nice thing about that is even though you have to clean up the headlands, you very rarely are going to have a problem with it running into like those trees down there at the end of the field, right? It, it stays really close and tight to the field. All right, and so now that it got to the end of the field, it automatically stopped. I normally just clean up the headlands by hand, but if you wanted to, you could come over here, you know, get lined up, hit new, and then we can lower, lock on, and drive. And then we can use GPS mod to um, help keep us straight while we're cleaning up the headlands here. So then I'll just turn by hand, get lined up with the next row, lock on, lower, turn on cruise control. And we'll 
we'll lift it up, turn. Lock on, lower, and turn on cruise control. Now we lift it, we turn. Lock on, lower, and cruise control. come down to the other side of the field and just repeat the same process to clean up these headlands. So if you didn't want to make such a tight turn, you could come down this way, lock on, lower, cruise control. swing out here because this time we do have to double right back and then we can pick this lane here we'll lock on lower turn on cruise control and we can lift it and now down here we don't have to turn as sharp because we can skip that one lane so there we go lock on cruise control lower and there we go this will be the last lane and we'll have this field completely finished so there you go we used gps mod to perfectly cultivate this field we got 100 percent coverage without excessive overlap or having to uh, you know run back and forth and repeat ourselves too much on the field Alright, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, in the next episode in this tutorial series, uh, we're going to use GPS Mod to assist with uh, cutting, raking, baling, and collecting hay bales. So, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, would you please consider giving it a thumbs up? That helps a lot. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more Farming Simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer, thanks for watching.